Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Predator Exotics. We've got another solo video today because of COVID restrictions. Me and Ollie can't meet up. So just like last week's video with Ollie doing the Ghost Mantis care guide on his own, this week you're going to be getting a care guide from me on my own. Um, so today's video is about the Vietnamese giant centipede. The, we picked this up from Ridgeway Exotics back in October for their Halloween sale. Um, we're going to be doing a care guide for it today. I hope you enjoy. So here we have the Vietnamese giant centipede. The Latin name for this species is Scolopendra subspinines. Uh, that's what we picked up as and it was named in the shop. Um, it's possibly a Scolopendra dehani. They're very similar species um, as they vary in colour and they mix between the subspinines and the dehani very similarly. So it's hard to tell but luckily the care, care for this species is the same and they occupy the same regions. So we'll go through both as if they are just the Vietnamese giant centipede. So in the wild, the Vietnamese giant centipede is obviously from Vietnam, but they're not only from Vietnam, they're from the whole of Southeast Asia, ranging from Thailand, Malaysia, down through the Philippines, um, even into Australia. The Dahani has a, um, a slightly smaller range of just Southeast Asia, whereas the subsequent islands can be found all throughout Southeast Asia, onto Central America, um, the Caribbean islands, places like that, it's got a very broad natural geographic range, um, so you would encounter this through most tropical and subtropical regions. As I mentioned earlier, they come in a variety of colours. So the main colour is this brownish purple colour that you see on the species we have. They have red antennas and then their legs range from yellow down to orange down to red right at the very base. Um, but it's quite cool as the head sort of mimics the back of the body. So it's hard to tell for a predator which side is the head and which side is the bottom. Um, this is quite good as well because they will actually move their tail, uh, making it look like it's its head so it can put off predators um, and they can just stick the end out of the burrow um, and a predator might think it was the head and they might think they get bit. So there's loads of other colour variations naturally occurring in the wild. There's also the Chinese red-headed and the cherry red centipede, um, the Malaysian red cherry centipede. Um, these are very cool different species depending on which one you like. Um, you can get a variety of different colours and pick whichever one you like the best. So before we get into how to care for this species, the first thing that you know, need to know is that it is venomous. Um, these are not a beginner species, um, so if you are looking to get centipede, make sure you've got previous experience with animals such as scorpions and tarantulas, other venomous species that aren't as aggressive or aren't as quick as centipedes as these are very quick and they are prone to escaping so you don't want to take any chances with these species. So talking about the venom potency of this species, it is quite a lot. Uh, in the UK here you don't need a dangerous wild animals license for this species but there is one reported case of the Scolopendra subspinines actually killing someone. Uh, this was a seven year old girl in the Philippines. Um, she was bitten in the head and it took about 28 hours for the effects of the venom to actually kill her. Um, this is obviously a rare occurrence as it is only one case and it's got, it's got such a wide geographic range. The fact that it was such a young person and it, they were bitten in the head obviously contributed to the factors that she did die. Um, it's usually people that are younger, older, have previous health conditions that, that are going to be at risk of the venom. Also, if you are allergic to the venom, you could go into anaphylactic shock. This has actually happened um, quite a lot and we have heard stories of in the UK people getting centipedes and then going into anaphylactic shock when they get bit. So don't take any, um, so make sure you take all precautions with this species. Make sure you grab yourself a nice long pair of tongs so that you don't have to be too near the centipede and make sure you're keeping it safe like in a separate box and then transfer it into the container like I'll show you in a bit, um, nice and safely without any, taking any risks. So the Vietnamese giant centipede is one of the larger species of centipede. They can reach around 8 inches in length, possibly larger. Um, this is a very large centipede species um, and that's why you need to keep it in a large enclosure like I'm about to tell you. So now that you know where the Vietnamese giant centipede is from and that it is a very venomous species, now let's talk about how you would care for one if you do decide to purchase one. We keep ours in a critter keeper. Um, this is about 40 centimetres long, 20 centimetres wide, and then another 30 centimetres tall. Um, ideally, you might even want a bigger enclosure than this, as the safest way to keep your centipede is to have the um, height from the top of the substrate to the top of the enclosure to be longer than your centipede. 
This way the centipede can't climb, they can't climb smooth surfaces, so your centipede won't be able to get onto the roof of the enclosure and possibly escape. Luckily these have clips all the way around and a clip top lid, so there's no chance of it escaping. With this one, uh, as you might have seen in previous episodes, the centipede can actually get onto this uh, sort of ridge around the side. Um, we've checked it, we keep it in another enclosure, so even if it did escape, it would be inside another enclosure, but it can't get through the bars. Um, but if you had a smaller centipede species, it might be able to get through. So just be careful on what enclosure you choose. You might want to choose one with a clip top lid, just with some air holes, so that there's zero chance of it escaping. As I said earlier, they're found in tropical and subtropical regions in South East Asia and Central America. This means they like it humid. So you are going to want to use a thick soil substrate. We use Arcadia Earth Mix Jungle. This is really good at holding in humidity um, and it's great for your species as it will keep the humidity high um, and allow them to burrow naturally. So they do burrow quite a lot. They will make tunnels all throughout the substrate. Um, these tunnels will hold in the Arcadia Earth Mix Jungle very well and they can create their natural burrows in the substrate which is really important for them. So once you've got your substrate, that's all you really need because their burrows will act as a hive. We've chosen to put a fake Exoterra T-Rex skull in there just for a bit of decoration. This means that it can start its burrow in the hide if it so wishes. It feels a little bit more comfortable and provides some climbing spaces um, just so that they're enriched when they're walking around the enclosure. Also we put some Ardisia leaves from the Exoterra dual layer floor pack. Um, this is just a bit of decoration, makes it look a bit more naturalistic. Um, as you don't really just want a tub of dirt, it's a little bit boring. The only other thing we've added to the cage is a small Exoterra water dish. This is going to raise humidity a little bit more, also providing an area where the, the centipede can go to drink if it so wishes, even though it will get most of the water content from the prey it consumes. So I keep mentioning they're tropical and subtropical species and the humidity needs to be high. You need to keep the species around 70 to 80% humidity, this means spraying it down two to three times a week, sort of every other day, will keep the humidity nice and high, but you don't want it too damp or stagnant, as this can create mould inside the enclosure, which won't be healthy for your centipede. Also, they like it a little bit warmer. Um, you can keep this species at room temperature if you have a warmer house. If your house stays around 20, 21 degrees, that's perfect, but if it drops below that 20 degree mark, you might want to put an additional heater on this species. So for the first few days we kept it without a heater and then we decided to add an extra heat mat. We put a 7 watt heat mat just on the back of the enclosure. So if it decides to build a bar on the back of the enclosure it will be a little bit warmer than the rest of the enclosure. We set this to around 24 degrees. This means it keeps it nice and happy and healthy at that sort of temperature. Anything over 30 degrees is a little bit too hot. You want to keep it in the mid 20s for the perfect temperature. So let's talk about the most exciting thing about your centipede that's feeding it. They are very aggressive hunters and they're nocturnal, so they will venture out of their burrows at night to search for prey. They're not a sit and wait predator, even though sometimes they might sit in the burrow. They will actively prowl the enclosure at night, looking for its next meal. They're also very quick, so as soon as you drop that prey item in there, they'll curl up on it a bit like a snake or a constrictor would do, um, and bite it and inject that venom into it, killing it instantly. Like most invertebrates, you feed it once or twice a week, um, especially as you're feeding them large prey items. Once a week, feed them a couple of large locusts, they will devour these, and if they do eat both of them, um, maybe put an extra one in a couple days later, but mostly keep it till once a week. This is so your centipede doesn't get too overweight, as you will start to see the segments bulging. Um, it's nice to know that it's healthy, but you don't want it to the point where, especially once they're adult, you don't want that exoskeleton bulging too much as they've already completed their final molts. As you can see, they're quite a large centipede, so they can take on large prey items. In the wild, they would take on items that are bigger than themselves, such as mice and other small mammals. Um, but in captivity, you can feed them large insects. So the largest locusts you can find are really good for them. And they will munch through them with their chelicerae, which are the two appendages. They're actually modified front legs that inject the venom. They're not fangs. Um, and these will inject the venom and kill the prey instantly. There is actually a scientific study where they took a Scolopendra subspinines um, that was three grams in weight um, and they fed it a 45 gram mouse 
um, and it took the mouse down, bit it, and it died within 30 seconds. So something that's only three grams can take out a 45 gram animal in 30 seconds. Um, you don't want to be messing about with this species. So after you've fed your Vietnamese giant centipede, you are going to want to clean up after them. They are one of the messier arachnids when it comes to feeding because they are very primitive. Scorpions and spiders are a little bit more evolved than the centipede, even though they're all arachnids. So they do make a bit more of a mess when they are eating. This means that you have to clean up the wings, legs and other body parts that it didn't get around to eating as it will make quite a mess once after feeding time. So let's talk about handling your Vietnamese giant centipede. Don't. Basically, get yourself a pair of long tongs. You don't want to handle a giant centipede or any centipede for that matter as you don't know whether you're allergic to the venom and even if you're not, it can still do a lot of damage and could put you in hospital if you weren't careful. Basically, with a centipede, you just want to watch it and observe it, move it and transfer it from enclosure to enclosure as carefully as you can. Um, even people that handle them um, say that Centipedes do test bites as they walk along, so even if it doesn't mean to bite you, they will walk along your hand, sort of biting, testing out its surroundings, which isn't good when it's a venomous species. So the breeding and incubation species for this species is quite interesting, and it was something that would be great to get into. So these species live up to 10 years um, and will reproduce with a male. After they've reproduced, they are, lay around 50 to 80 eggs, which the female will actually incubate. She will wrap around them like a snake with her legs cord around the eggs. She protects them and then once they hatch, she'll have little baby centipedes huddled up in a ball um, and once they've molted once, they will venture off and then you can separate them into different enclosures. The centipedes molt about once a year and it takes around four to five years for them to become adult. Um, so this obviously is an adult, um, so we don't know how old it is, um, but hopefully it's got a few years left in her. So what sort of behaviours will you witness from your Vietnamese giant centipede? Obviously we talked about this being a nocturnal species, so during the day it will hide in its burrows and it will venture out at night um, to hunt for its prey. You'll also see them cleaning themselves quite regularly. They will go along cleaning each individual leg as they go down the body. Centipedes have one pair of legs on each segment of their body. This is how you differentiate them from millipedes which have two sets of legs per segment of their body. They'll also frequently clean their antenna, um, running their antenna through their mouth parts, cleaning them as well as all along their body, which is quite nice to watch um, and you know it's keeping itself clean. So the most vulnerable stage for your centipede is actually when it's molting. This is when you need the highest humidity. You might want to bump it up to sort of 80, 90%. Um, this is, makes it easier for it to slide out of its old exoskeleton and then don't feed it for at least a week after it molts its exoskeleton because it will be very soft and the prey could damage, damage your centipede. So you don't want to go into the enclosure and interfere with it in any way, but wait for that exoskeleton to harden before you can mess around with your centipede. So how much is a Vietnamese giant centipede and the setup going to cost you? Well, the centipede itself isn't very expensive. It's around 30 pounds. Um, I've seen them for 25 pounds. We got this one on sale for 15 from Ridgeway Exotics which was great. Um, and the setup is also very basic. So you're gonna get yourself a large critter keeper like this one. This is about 10 pounds if you buy it new. A bag of Arcadia Earth Mix Jungle is around another 10 to 15 pounds. Um, and you don't really need any other decoration apart from the water bowl. So you can set up the whole enclosure for not a lot of money, but you do still need to be an advanced keeper if you are keeping Vietnamese giant centipedes. So before we finish the video, let's throw in a clip of how you safely transfer your giant centipede into its enclosure without any mishaps, keeping everyone as safe as possible. So here is obviously our Exoterra Fornarium. It has clips along all the sides. So it keeps it nice and safe and it means it's nice and secure for your centipede. When you're transferring your centipede inside its new enclosure, always use the long tongs like I said earlier. This keeps you as far away from the centipede as possible um, and if needs be you can move the centipede away without using your hands as you don't want to get bit by this centipede. So without further ado, let's transfer it into its enclosure um, and watch it move around and possibly make some new burrows as I did upset the enclosure just before this video.
make sure it's all clipped in nice and safe and we can actually get a quick clip of it actually drinking from the water bowl which is actually quite a rare sight to see So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this Vietnamese giant centipede care guide. Obviously it is a little bit different me being on my own um, and it's a little bit hard to, to remember everything you've got to say. Um, I hope I've covered everything. If I haven't, um, please ask us any questions in the comments and we will answer them straight away. So without further ado, let's wrap up this video. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel Predator Exotics as well as going over to Instagram and following us there. You see daily updates on all of the species that we keep as well as extra feeding clips and stuff like that of species like this, which is really cool to watch. So don't forget to tune in to all of our other episodes, as well as the Friday feature video. We've got a new series run on on Monday, so go check that out, as well as the podcast every Wednesday. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.